the soul is having many lifetimes on earth as this has provided much growth for her and uh, in her desires to work in the field of emotion and mind. Uh, we will not surprisingly take her right into a Mayan lifetime, which has been such a strong um, frequency band in this current life. You've not had just one lifetime there, but we would, um, uh, suggest that you've had at least two or three uh, because that uh, energy of the indigenous peoples, the star peoples actually, who uh, originate from Palladian star systems was very much in flow uh, for your soul growth and for your human evolution. You have uh, prayed in the temples, you have climbed those steps. We see you also as being an initiate, initiate, and not one but two times. You were very interested in learning the earthbound ways tied to the galactic energies that were uh, very, very focused on embedding uh, these codes and these systems. Uh, during a rebirth of this planet. And so too, we would say that we are seeing a rebirth occurring within you. This is a very deliberate lifetime that you um, conjoined with uh, to not only have the human experience of awakening to these teachings and these memories, uh, but also to apply them in a manner that can be very functional for you. So what does functional mean? Uh, we would say uh, that working with um, your own te telepathic field, we see that this can be a, a quality in your life that if you bring more focus to this, you can go out and read the field. You have done this in um, one of these lives. You rose to the level where you became teacher for others who were learning about the sensory human embodied experience. And what we say to you is to practice when you feel called to in a very grounded way of when to leave the house, when the traffic would be optimum, when would be a good time to engage with those hobbies and enjoyments that you prefer. And to keep track of the insights and the experiences you have. Further, we would like you to program into the telepathic scanning, a experience or a vision or a sight, for example. As I go out today, I will be seeing a person in a yellow windbreaker, you see? And, and you're, you, you'll be placing just a very elemental quality uh, to your projection out into the field. Um, you may project it with, um, as I'm traveling here or there, a majority of my experience will be green lights with very few red lights. Um, this can be a very functional uh, skill and habit that you can engage with that will, um, that is a reflection of some of the skills you developed during these Mayan experiences. You were part of a group that would scan out into the land uh, to see approaching visitors, to see weather, to um, uh, tune into the tones and uh, how the other tribes or other people were doing. This was a talent that you cultivated as an initiate, as an initiate, 
and one that you then taught in a, another lifetime or human band of experience to others. So you, you were elevated to a teaching role um, with others. And this was a great skill that you uh, taught and used. And this is available to you now for more expansion. Um, you know, we would ask you to focus on that third eye and to bring love and to bring light to it, um, like clearing or shining up a lens, if you will, and centering in the heart of love and safety and curiosity and pleasure and joy in this engagement. And you can train yourself to uh, project out into your field, your hologram, very simple directives and make a note of that. And as you do that and project that into the field, um, the, the response to, um, to that energy, see? And we find that this can be quite a satisfying uh, experience. And as you grow more comfortable with this and the awesomeness that you find in these projections, that will naturally expand in different ways that are available to you uh, when you are ready and when you feel so connected to do so. That is part of your love of photography too. The looking through the aperture. We say, open the aperture here and learn to focus and adjust that. Interesting, it's very interesting. I'm just seeing some of the relating dynamics in one of these. Yeah, they're giving me three lifetimes in this indigenous energy. You're very aligned with Pleiadian, ladies, ladies, which is teaching about this new human and teaching about this fifth dimensional energy because our galactic brothers and sisters went through this very process and you were bringing this process during these Mayan experiences, um, the rebirthing of the planet um, in order to have the emotional uh, expression tied to psychic energy and telepathy. And then you went on to uh, become a bit of an instructor down the line. Do you have any questions on this? Um, no, I just, <laughs> it, it, some of it's making sense to me, actually. I actually have a huge smile on my face when some of the things you, they brought forward. <laughs> yeah. That make, uh, that is making some sense to me. I, maybe I take that back. I do have a question. Um, the best way, is it like practice? Um, like working out, muscle memory kind yes. of thing. Yep. Um, occasionally, you know, when you start to doubt oneself. Yep. Or, you know, I don't know, if something doesn't go, like you were saying, if I go out on a day and say, gee, I am going to see this person or or somebody's on my mind, you know, A, to trust it, or B, because say I didn't make a connection that day not to doubt, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, oh, it didn't work. <laughs> well, well, yeah, because there can be a little time blip there, but they're asking you to start with this in, in a consistent way with very simple things. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Yes, but like, yes. Um, you know, um, what were they talking about? Traffic lights, yellow windbreaker, um, just these little things. It, it will start growing that muscle. They're not talking about people yet or orchestrating. Right. Yeah. Um, and certainly, by all means, you can do that. Um, you know, there may be, um, it, it depends on the other parties too, where they are and how strong they're listening. This practicing they're talking about is not dependent necessarily on the action of another, if that makes sense. Yes. I was, no, absolutely. It was just as an example, throwing yeah. something. Um, oh, sure. Some of the things are um, why I decided to go to a certain location to take a photo, uh, right. you know, to, to trust that in, as you say, engage in that, that kind of an exchange. Like, gee, I never thought to go here. Why did I, you know, go right. here today? Um, or or um, the biggest thing is I'm just finishing reading a book um, with Palladian energy. So that made me really smile, <laughs> kind of like I've been feeling I'm just laughing because I'm like there's no way you can make this up I'm literally you know talking to them all the time I look up at the sky and you know right now the they're below the horizon so you don't need to know this but right. the the, the oh, star system right it's a way of confirming um because this is a time of proving these things to yourself we have yes. to get over the doubting Thomas which it's very natural, the left brain and the fear and the resistance even to it. Because um, this is softening and it's gentle. It runs very counter to all the teaching and programmings and the way the society is constructed in a lot of ways. Many souls are here to reclaim, to reclaim in an awakened state, talents, abilities, memories while in this prism of light is what I'll call this incarnation. That's how they describe it, a prism of light. When you hold a crystal up and the light scatters through your kitchen, through your living room, uh, one band of that light is indicative of this lifetime, right? So, so yeah, um, it's very gentle stuff. The hardest time I have with clients is the love and the gentleness of it. It's like, because I'm always saying, well, I've got to work harder and I've got to, you know, <laughs> and it, it's inverted to that. It's a softening and an opening. Okay. Yeah. But, well, and, thank you. and I'm going to say it makes sense on the, on the, uh, you know, the inner eye. Sometimes when I close my eyes or I try to meditate with, I don't mean meditate, like really, as you know, connect with Aztec or something, it always looked like it's coming online a little bit, meaning, oh, it always looks like I'm looking into an eye and I never thought of it as like a lens or an aperture, you know, it's dark, but still there. Like kind right. of, I'm like, oh, that's kind I, of But cool. it's, it's going to be opening. It's going to be up and don't get impatient though. Don't yeah. Get impatient. <laughs> the human is like, I want to be, you know, <laughs> right. Oh yeah, I want the ta-da. The ego yeah. gets all, uh, and, and it's like, gentle is what they're saying and the pleasure of you know working with it in a consistent gentle kind of um innocuous almost manner okay okay thank you yeah i, I thought the uh, analogy with the photography was fascinating too yeah because that's a way of looking through a lens and they're drawing a comparison not a comparison but an analogy with that strong third eye activation. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. yeah awesome. Well, yeah. Um, I have Christine here. You here, Christine? Oh, I'm here. Thank you. Hi. Hi, nice to see you again. <laughs> hear you again. Yeah. Welcome. Okay. All righty.
Okay, they're showing me two different scenes. I think that's about all I can handle with a view right now. Maybe I'll open them more, but they're absolutely taking you again into this um, African indigenous lifetime. What I'm seeing is white um, on the face. It's a marking that the um, medicine, uh, you know, elders, teachers, participants would put on their face, their head, there's meaning to that. They want you to research that. The white, it, it's like spots or specks, the markings that uh, you would wear as you were dancing, <laughs> dancing around the fire, dancing in unison with others because the dancing was an amplifier of and a raising of the consciousness with intention. And this would even involve weather manipulation. Not what they do now. This is using consciousness to create weather for the tribe, for the village, whether there was more rain needed, um, whether there was too much rain and you were seeking to lessen that. You were part of a group of people who would work with intentions for the good of the whole. And the dancing you see was part of the expanded consciousness and the practice used to invoke um, positive, uh, whatever was needed. But, but you were always, it was always on behalf of the community, always on behalf of the village and the group. Um, you were known to be a strong healer in that manner. And so the dancing, you worked a great deal at the lunations and at certain star alignments, you know, part of an affinity that you have for astrology as well, because that is part of your soul history. Then they're pulling me over to the, to the West, Western cultures, Western countries. And I'm seeing you as a boy fishing. I'm seeing you as a boy fishing. So let me go in and see what that's about fishing. You're, you're using a stick to fish, though. And you're fishing in streams. Um, and this is warmer weather. I'm seeing the climate is being warmer with that be pulling us to Portugal, would this be pulling us to Spain? Um, it was a very simple lifetime in nature and you understood the rhythms of, uh, you understood the ways of water and how to feed self. You're by yourself though. I see it was quite isolated. There's something happened. What happened? There was a problem with the family that you were attached to. There was an ostracized, being ostracized, uh, none of which was your fault though. 